Hi, I'm Tim Rommel, and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. It's been about a month since you've uh, heard from me, and I've had a lot of you guys reach out, and I haven't been able to get back to you, so I thought I would do this video, let you guys know uh, what was going on. A lot of you that's been following this series know that I've been really pushing to get through this truck so I can get it out to my dad's house. I wanted him to be able to see it, and then uh, I was going to be out there full time um, until he passes. Um, I got a phone call um, about the 28th. I shouldn't say I gave a phone call about the 28th and talked to him. And I talked to him every morning at 9 o'clock. And um, this morning he wasn't uh, sounding really good. It was on a Thursday. And uh, so I came out here. I tarped everything up on the truck. I packed everything up. I had to do an oil change on my truck and uh, drove out to Bullhead City where I spent uh, 21 days. I was lucky enough uh, to get him on hospice his last 18 days, uh, but he passed on 17 February at uh, 2300 hours. Um, it was a hard time, and uh, one of the things that I would like to talk a little bit about is uh, adversity that comes up in life, because it's one of those uh, things that we never really plan for. Um, and I talk about this a lot on um, when somebody breaks a bone or gets paralyzed or, or anything that's really uh, tragic that happens in their, in their life. Um, for me, I went out there with a good plan because I knew all of my focus had to shift from all of my projects at the house to 100% focused on him. But I did still need a little time for me. Um, I knew um, he was taking a couple hour nap a day, so I knew I would be able to maybe get out on the bicycle, uh, and that I did. I did some training, I was able to run. But through adversity, you have to shift your focus from what you were doing yesterday, what you want to do today, to what you can do in that amount of time to keep yourself solid and mentally sound. Um, so that's what I did. I got through that process. Um, he uh, he went kind of tough. Um, I'd love to tell you uh, he wasn't in pain. Uh, he was struggling to breathe. And um, lucky enough, things just played out. Um, talk about the universe or God reaching out and changing um, situation. You know, I got got out there on a Thursday and uh, he had skint himself. And he had been showing um, signs of late stages of congestive heart failure. And um, what that is, is your body is just kind of filling up with fluid. It doesn't have enough of a, a strong enough heartbeat, I guess, to pump out the fluid from what I understand. I'm not a doctor, but um, he wanted to never go to a home and he wanted to die in his house and he wanted to get up to heaven to uh, see my mom. And uh, that was my job to help him do that as peacefully and uh, respectfully as I could. Um, Went to bed Thursday night. We had talked about possibly getting him on hospice. He was kind of on the edge whether or not to do it. And I was kind of like, okay, well, I want to respect his wishes, but I need I need a little help. Um, so Thursday night before I go to bed, I have a buddy I race in Dural Cross with, Roger Flood. And he's a hospice nurse. And he reached out to me at 10 o'clock out of the blue. Like, hey, Tim, what's going on? Uh, we had been talking about paramotors and flying. And uh, he reached out, so we talked about my dad, and he said, yeah, definitely get him on get him on hospice. So I wasn't on the fence anymore on that. I was just kind of at a spot where um, I felt like, um, yeah, in the morning I'll wake up and do that. So I didn't sleep well, woke up at 5 in the morning, and then I had another buddy from high school, which is now a doctor in Sholo, Arizona. He reached out, and... Um, he said, hey, Tim, you know, how's things going? At five in the morning. I haven't talked to this guy in 32 years or something crazy. And uh, so we got to talk in and um, we, you know, of course, that was on my mind with my dad. And, you know, he recommended hospice. So started that process the next morning, um, uh, which would be Friday morning. And my dad really didn't want to go to, uh, he would not go to the hospital because <laughs> he was okay with dying from uh, congestive heart failure just not getting COVID. So that was a tough one because you need a doctor's recommendation to go on hospice. So we worked some things up and we ended up doing a video chat and River Valley Hospice in Bullhead City, Arizona. Um, I give uh, 11 out of 10. 
everyone um, that works in hospice, I have to thank you. Um, you guys are the true angels of, of, uh, of earth and uh, you made the experience so respectful and uh, so, so good. And my dad's actually condition got better for about a week before he started to go downhill. So 21 days later after I was out there, um, he passed away and um, kind of started to handle a little affairs out there. I came home the next day. I've been home physically now just a little over a week. Um, the weather has been absolutely terrible to try to weld or work on a truck out in an outdoor environment. We've had a lot of wind, but uh, as you look around today, we have a one to three mile an hour breeze. And that story being said, let's talk about the uh, expedition truck and where I'm at in this project. So I believe I have six roof panels uh, installed and these are 40 thousandths painted aluminum. They're put on with uh, 3M very high bond double sided sticky tape that's one inch wide and 40 thousandths thick. Um, I've done that. That's exactly how I did my adventure truck. And then I shot these little self tapping screws uh, in it. On this rig, I believe I'm only going to shoot the self tappers in the uh, in the edges because of the bond is so um, so tough. Once it hits 70 degrees, that stuff really bites in. And if you wanted to pull the panel, um, which I did on my truck a couple times, um, just put it on a little crooked and. Uh, yeah, it, it's a it's about a two hour ordeal to get the panel off, which you you totally ruin, and um, you have to you know take that tape off and reinstall new tape, which is a difficult project. But uh, as you can see right now, I'm kind of uh, set up. I'm ready to put the last uh, panel on here in the garage. Um, I will do that after I finish the video, and um, got everything squared up. Everything is looking great. This is where the uh, spare tires go and this whole rear area is going to be a storage underneath i'll show you that as we go down um, so once i get that back panel on i'm going to come forward and work on now these are not going to be windows these are going to be fold up panels so this will be framed up inside with hinges on it and uh, probably a double latch and that'll go out on sh uh, struts so nice days um, that'll be able to be opened up on uh, crappy days, I don't want to see it raining, windy, or snowing. Um, there's going to be two windows in this truck, and they're very small. They're the um, acrylic. They're a double pane. They're very thermally efficient. Uh, there will be one on one corner and then one on the other corner. Um, this is where the bed lift is going to go. I have a happy jack system that I was able to pull out of a uh, Thor Outlaw when I did a remodel uh, this summer. And um, so the bed will be up in this level, and that's why I uh, framed all of this up at a different level. So this is uh, physically eight feet, and then that's seven. Um, I had to shrink this a little bit to get the eight foot panel to come down and tie in the bottom uh, to look correctly. And I'll show you that as we go uh, outside. But uh, I got this framed up. So this is an eight foot basically to this, this right here. And what I'm thinking is I'm gonna cut this. And once I get this framed out correctly, um, I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a slant. So i get my hand in the picture here. So this slants down towards the cab. It won't be 100%. I do um, think I am gonna build a fairing for this. So I kind of like to, the fairing maybe to be about this high because I'm doing an air, cab air conditioning and all that fan and all the ugly stuff sits right here. Um, that being said, with air conditioning, I have a Pioneer Mini Split, and that'll be able to run off of my 1600 watts, and uh, I guess that's 1,030 amp hours of battery. Um, and then I also have, which, uh, there we go, you can see it's a Dometic um, regular RV low profile type. Um, air conditioner that I'm going to uh, wire that'll be wired in so like we're at when we're at a park like Newport Dunes or an RV park that has plug-ins I'll plug that in and be able to use that that also has a heater feature in it um, I am using in this truck a um, it's a name for it it's like a diesel heater that heats the air not not like a flame and then uh, pushes that that warm air inside um, the name's slipping me right now but um 
Just to update, you can see how I did the air cleaner. I moved the stock air cleaner and uh, put it on the other side. That made for mounting the box um, a lot better. Um, that I was able to run things a lot closer instead of this being way back over here. So I'll uh, frame in that mini split so it's got uh, plenty of fan room on both sides. And then this is gonna be a cutout for a pass through. And so you'll be able to go from the cab into here. Um, you can see down here that I'll need to uh, frame this out also. So it's kind of like a crawl through. Um, and I think that'll work out really, uh, really nice and really well. Battery's up in place. Um, I got the layout kind of what's going on in here for the kitchen. Um, Cubic Mini, I went with the Grizzly instead of the... Uh, the Cub this time, um, I just did that. I, I would imagine the Cub has got plenty of um, a BDU to, to warm this area, but um, I wanted to go a little bit bigger, try something else out. Um, I got my hand hammered copper sink. This is a three burner stove and oven combo, Dometic. I am going to run the Snowmaster again, as well as this DC um, operated Ever Chill fridge. Um, no, the doors aren't messed up on this. It's just got a vinyl that kind of makes it look, I don't know if you can see that in there. But um, on this side right here, there's going to be a, uh, a booth set up. And uh, you'll be able to look out the window. And then the bathroom will start in this, this area here. So as we see this uh, markings on this, from this bulkhead back will be my garage area. I do have a hatch. And um, while I'm talking about that, I do have framed up back here for two Max Air fans. Um, just the way it kind of worked out, I wanted one above the sink and I wanted one above the table. Um, so not a whole lot of distance there. I'm going to put another one in in uh, this area back here in the, uh, the bathroom. But uh, this area back here will be have a hatch. The hatch is already framed up and ready to go. I just got to cut the material and get that in. And then I'll lay out this last section here. Uh, for the framework back here, I am gonna run um, about a foot longer um, off of this. I'll tie in there with the sleeve and just come out a little bit like a foot. So it just gives us a little bit of an awning effect. Um, this is gonna be an upper deck once everything's all put together. So happy with how everything has come up. Um, this is another one of those uh, windows that folds up. Right now, I am uh, doing my best to get organized with everything I got going on. I have nothing that really is complete, nothing that's going to be easy to complete. Um, I have about three elephants and one whale to eat, and uh, <laughs> this would be the whale. So one bite at a time. Um, why I have nice days, I want to get out and do the work on the truck. When the days are not so nice, I'll be in the shop. So you can see on get this tarp out of the way you can see here that I, I framed out um, under storage so the box will continue down so it doesn't look like it's a box stuck on top of a frame it actually looks like it's integrated as an RV coming back um, I haven't seen a whole lot of people drop these stairs down as part of the uh, the vehicle usually it's some fold down deal I am gonna have a double that folds down off of this so when you open the door this will fold down and it'll give you a nice couple steps up. From this area back, kind of continuing on a, probably back as a box and then up at an angle. Um, this will be tied in where the spare tire is the lowest part of the, um, of the departure angle. And this is all trailer hitch and I've already got that framed up. Anyone that's watching uh, my Instagram, which is adventure.athlete also, you can see that I already had the tire up and mounted. I am utilizing the uh, Warren, I believe these are 4,000 pound little mini winches. Um, anyway, um, that's gonna be used for, I got two of those. That's gonna be used to drop the, uh, the, the gate. It's gonna, you know, it's basically this back end is like a toy hauler. So the ramp will drop down on winches. And then also these winches will be set up in such a way where that runs the uh, the spare tire. Um, I still have some tabs to put in um, right here. 
before to hold everything in place but um, it gets pinned in two different places and then that kind of comes out and up and uh, the rear uh, full-size spares of course and uh, they do spin I have them on trailer spindles so as far as the truck goes um, I'm jumping back on that as soon as I upload this video let's talk about some of the other things that I got going on crazy like like building an expedition truck isn't enough um, this is the toolbox that is going in the truck. That will be, uh, as soon as I can get that up into the truck, uh, that's where it is going. Anyone that's been following the channel on probably a little different view, um, you know I'm building the 890 Rally. I was lucky enough to be able to get one. And I'm super stoked with this motorcycle. So far I've changed out the, uh, the wheels, single side disc. I did a lot of this stuff came from Rottweiler Performance. I have his uh, new um, air filter system uh, in carbon for this, and I think that turned out really nice, looks very nice, and it's a super nice fit. Um, so the tank's got to come off. The last little details to this bike, I've gotten little parts in. COVID's, you know, done us um, good and bad in places. Um, I'm sorry for the loss of, of, of the people that have passed. Um, it's given me time. But anytime you order anything, um, you know that um, it's not going to come in just overnight. So one of the things I ordered and it took about two months to get was this Rebel X uh, Rally Tower. And um, there's basically the front windscreen on it. So I got to remove all of this and get that going. I also have a Trail Tech Voyager is going to go in at the same time. And why I'm doing that, I'm going to put the Shirai uh, lithium battery so probably taking 25 30 pounds off this motorcycle for the entire uh, build process with wheels battery is going to lose some weight um, I chopped a little bit off of the um, silencer or can whatever you want to call it um, uh, decatted and anything that didn't need to be on the bike like the, uh, the, re the rear grab rails and all of this is cleaned up got the tail tidy on I'm going to use my 1290 for a Sentinel bike for two up for me and the wife to go into national parks. Um, I'll probably have to pick and choose what I uh, take for motorcycles on the trip. I think the back box there will hold about three full-size motorcycles, a couple bicycles, and then I want to be able to take, um, I have two Chirons. And for the guys that don't know... Um, what a Chiron is, um, it's basically a Chinese bicycle that I bought from Luna Cycles. And I've been, I absolutely love this thing. Even in stock trim, this bike is super, super fun. But uh, I'm into modern things if uh, you haven't followed all of that. So I have ordered a 21 inch uh, motorcycle front wheel that's laced up for uh, the Chiron hub. It's sitting in the back there. And then from Daniel Orlov, I, uh, from the Chiron shop, I ordered this 26 inch, basically a heavy duty mountain bike downhill front wheel setup. And um, that's gonna be the lightweight setup. I think I'm gonna run that on my wife's bike and I'm gonna run the 21 on this bike. And I selected this uh, gummy tire. And uh, for those of you that are just kind of following stuff and you wanna know the, the difference in a 21 uh, motorcycle front wheel and a 26 um, bicycle. They're almost identical. I mean, height wise, it's right in there. Uh, I am gonna run this front system tubeless and you can see a bright new shiny pair of 2021 Fox uh, 40 downhill uh, forks. I think I'm gonna run those on my wife's bike and I am waiting on two shocks to come in um, that will complete the whole setup on this. Uh, I was lucky enough to jump in the uh, in the line and get this light speed 72 um, volt battery and the uh, light speed uh, 8000 controller. So I got a lot of work to do. Um, that would be enough for most people all year. And I'm going to try to knock everything out that you see here by June. Uh, I got a new pallet jack because inside the shop I uh, actually have some uh, machining jobs to do. Um, so I did buy the Slant Pro from uh, Tormach. 
I'm in the process of setting up this uh, puzzle because nothing comes easy. And um, it's moving right along. I got the touchscreen for it. I got the turret. I have the um, automatic air closer. I have a bar puller for it. And I'm waiting on the tooling to show up. Um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to reach out. Um, anybody out there in Southern California, right now this, this uh, is located in San Bernardino, California. Um, anybody that um, is interested or has the knowledge of setting up a Slant Pro um, or setting up the uh, 1100, I'm putting the enclosure on this. I got an uh, automatic tool changer. Um, right now, time is, is the most important thing for me. Um, I'm willing to uh, pay you a, um, a good salary to come over and get this machine up and running and finish this one up, get the ATC in and uh, kind of get everything ready for production. Um, if there's somebody interested in that, let me know, please. Um, I'd be interested in paying you and I'm not looking to cheap out. I'm looking like, I'm not looking to train someone. I'm not looking for the guy out there that's like, hey, I can figure it out. Nope. I want somebody that's already done this, knows what they're doing, can show up and get the machine running in a day or two. Um, get this machine running in a day or two. Let's just say you spend a week here working eight hours a day. Um, I will pay you very well for that. Um, but you got to know what you're doing and you got to be able to get the thing up running and don't crash my machine. Anyway, um, that being said, I have another project. Um, tab and slot uh, table um, certified flat. Um, you can tell this thing comes in a million pieces. I bought a two foot by six foot um, table and then I bought extensions for the end and extensions for the side to turn this thing into um, it can be a three by six it can be a probably a eight by six um, or four by eight ultimately um, so I bought everything in that I got to put that together um, you can see I still have all the, the rails and everything to do on the cover I'm kind of halfway through this um, why the weather's crappy I'm in here working when the weather's nice, I'm outside working. So if you notice, I've taken um, all the chop saw station out. This is gonna be a cleaner shop. Anything for cutting metal, grinding, or anything is gonna go out there. Um, final assembly uh, and a fixtured table will go here because I wanna do a few different things. Um, I'll probably get back to some bicycle frames and uh, there's a few things that I want to do as far as building some frames for the Sheron stuff. So I got a lot on my plate, a lot I want to go explore, a lot I want to do. Um, I got through and got my powder coating um, three foot by five foot inside uh, oven um, wired up with a new control box. I was having some problems with shorting. I got that uh, set up and fixed and um, now I can powder coat uh, parts again. Uh, I've changed up my Torma, uh, torch mate, um, set that up so it's all one kind of system. I got the computer and everything out here so I can design, scan parts. That's going to be a lot quicker. On this uh, table, I have the new Miller 280 uh, Dynasty. That'll be on one side. And then that 255 that's up on the truck. As soon as I get done with all of the big structural stuff, it's going to come out of the truck. And my little 211 is going to go back in the truck. Um, I'm going to use this for more of a production system. I have, um, this was that first little tab and slot. Uh, I shouldn't say tab and slot. It's a, it's a fixture table. And I bought this from like, um, oh, what was it? Northridge Tool or something like that. It was like $179 shipped to the house. And once I used that to build um, the system right here on my, uh, on my truck, for the um, spare tire mount. And man, it just really made a nice um, setup to be able to get something up and running that square, fixtured nice and flat. Um, I left everything clamped down uh, as it was cooling. I pulled it out and there was very little warpage, if any. I mean, it's probably within um, a tenth of a degree and uh, there is no wobble to it. Not that it even needed to be that accurate. But I uh, got that set up. And um, that's kind of ready to go. I got to build one more of those. And pretty much, 
that's all I got going on. Not to mention that I have to go out and get my dad's house ready to sell and then get back on the BMW project. So <laughs> as you can tell, a little overwhelmed, but when you get into these situations, the best thing to do is, is just set up a checklist. Um, I used to use a planner. Now I use uh, grid paper and I just put boxes such as uh, install 72 volt battery in the Chiron, you know, put a box, install the front wheel, put a box, uh, the rally, you know. So I set up everything in little boxes. So it's nice to be able to even incrementally check things off the boxes instead of work the truck. Well, you don't get to check that off until you're done. And mentally, um, I think it really helps to be able to check things off the list and have a continuity. And that's one thing that I have right now going on is I have continuity happening. Um, I'm pretty much um, not having to live more of a double life. Um, for the last year, I've been pretty much going out to my dad's about every two weeks and then every other week. Um, this last probably, well, since August, so last five months or so. Um, it's been a lot. It's it's really like you lack continuity. You go out there, you get in, engulfed in that life for a week, and then you come back here and you're trying to figure out where was I at. That's where I find the list really help. So I uh, have a few things going, as you can see, but uh, I'm doing well. I'm solid. Um, thank you all for reaching out and saying, uh, asking if I was okay. Um, I never really seriously thought that I would have that many people reach out and just, um, you know, either message me uh, on Facebook or reach out through YouTube. I've had people text me emails. Um, amazing. Thank you all. I so appreciate you guys. Um, you've been wonderful. Uh, my family, Sierra, Jeremy, uh, Aubrey and Mackenzie has been wonderful. Um, as far as help, my wife has been wonderful. It's uh, really been a good deal. So I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, questions, comments, or if you happen to be a CNC guy uh, that can put these machines together and get them up and running, um, I'm totally capable of doing it. I just, I have other things going, as you can see. So sooner or later, I'll get through all of this probably by June-ish. Um, I hope to be camping in the uh, adventure truck. I I kind of have it worked out that about 45 solid days on that, I should be uh, operational. Um, probably never be done, just like the adventure truck is never done, but it's uh, about 99% complete. And this thing probably be about 90, 92% by June and um, definitely operational and go camping and you do little projects on it. So that'd be fun. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm Tim Robel and I'll catch you here next time.